Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, September 1st, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida with The Big Show, the Friday edition of the Revere Market Insight video, where we take a look back at the prior week, take a look ahead at what you need to know for next week, and update or review the world-famous 21 over 21 leaders list. Let's get right into it. State of the market, we're in an uptrend, effective as of Tuesday with the follow through day following the O'Neill methodology. Check the market trend over here. We've got uh, green arrows across the board for uh, market leadership. And then all five of the major indexes are above their short term 21 day moving average, their medium term 50 day moving average, and their long term 200 day moving average. We use these arrows to determine how much money we're going to allocate into the market, as this gives us a good idea of the strength of the overall market across three time frames. So, what just happened today uh, closed the lightest trading week of the year with a consolidation day for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 and small and mid caps took the lead reclaiming uh, decisively their 50 day moving average. Here are the final numbers. The eight ETF, eight growth ETF composite, the RG8 up 0.64% on the day. S&P 500, kind of a disappointment, gapped up six tenths of a percent after good news on uh, from the jobs report and put in the high within the first five minutes. Uh, pulled back and then uh, basically went sideways for most of the afternoon, uh, ended up 0.18%. NASDAQ 100, a bigger disappointment, gapped up six tenths of a percent, uh, but some selling in NVIDIA and Tesla dragged this uh, index down today. Dow up a third of a percent, mid caps up nine tenths, Russell 2000 small caps up 1.1, boosted by oils and banks. Global 6040, up 0.03, dragged down by bonds as uh, despite the good uh, or the favorable jobs report, favorable from a uh, meeting the desires of the Fed to have employment slowing, in particular average hourly earnings as that's a big component of inflation, but interest rates rose anyway and that dragged down uh, bond prices. Bond prices down, yields up. In-house protection up 0.08%. We were held back by uh, NVIDIA and Tesla underperforming today. We'll hit the tail of the tape and the 21 over 21. Let's get right into it. Uh, since this is Friday, I've got in the upper or the far right of the screen, I've got the weekly returns and the weekly bars for everything that I'm going through on the main screen. So in this case, the S&P 500, you can see up 0.18% today, but up 2.5% on the week. And you can see the favorable weekly candle reclaiming the red line, which is the 10 week, which pretty much corresponds to the red line over here, the 50 day, 10 week on a weekly chart, 50 day on a daily chart. So although we closed at the bottom of the range, and for a while had an outside negative reversal. We closed inside uh, yesterday's bar. Uh, not bad, uh, and I, I say not bad because we uh, we had been oversold on the 60 minute. Let me bring this up. Just expect this to happen uh, with indexes. You can see how this uh, you know forms waves and you don't stay oversold on the 60 minute chart of an index for usually more than uh, a day or two. You can see here going all the way back uh, to uh, back a month, uh, well, six weeks really. Uh, and this is the most we were overbought uh, fourth day. So you expect a pullback. So when you see gaps up, on an index to start the day and you've already been in overbought territory on the 60 minute, uh, there's a better than average chance that you're going to pull back a little bit. Let me expand this a little bit as you can see that there was a, a pretty strong period of time back here. This was a three day uh, move above back on 717, 718 and 719. Let's go back to the daily chart to see what that looked like. 
7, uh, 17, 18, and 19 here. So we were trending higher. And you always wonder how high can you go? Well, that day we got 6% above, 5.9% above the 50-day moving average on the S&P 500. That's also uh, a caution signal as you typically don't go uh, more than that higher, you're at risk of a pull off now you or a pullback. Now you can either uh, correct that through time or through price. In this case, it was two weeks in time and then the price uh, pullback started. So not extended by any way, shape or form on the uh, fit from the 50 day moving average on the daily chart here. Uh, but as I said, when you're three days into an over uh, sold on the oscillator on the 60 minute chart, uh, you're not going to make a whole lot of progress. And that's just uh, from reviewing that uh, oscillator throughout history. So uh, all in all, certainly a positive week with a follow through day and no distribution after the follow through day, which makes it, um, uh, gives us reason to look forward to optimism. From a seasonality standpoint, uh, the market in September usually rallies into the middle and sells off toward the end of September and the first week in October. So we'll be uh, comparing what's going on to the seasonal expectations as they've been a pretty decent fit uh, so far this year. Here's the NASDAQ 100 gap up. Uh, undercut yesterday's low, so an outside negative reversal. Closed inside yesterday's uh, bar, though, so just down 0.11%. And again, we were oversold here, too. Let's go to the 60-minute and take a look at uh, the stochastic. You can see one day, two days, three days oversold, uh, giving it up into the close yesterday and consolidating uh, or pulling back more on the 60-minute. Completely normal behavior but uh, remember usually three days at the max and if you stretch out to the fourth day and that goes to the downside too uh, this has a 14 period look back so basically um, the, once you start deviating from what was going on 14 bars ago uh, that's what impacts uh, the overall slope of the lines here so let's get back to the daily you can see the nasdaq 100 up 3.7 percent on the week certainly uh, pretty positive week there. Let's get rid of the stochastic. So uh, this is just a little bit easier to see. All right, onward now to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Up three tenths on the day. You can see us bouncing at the 2150 and 8 EMA as they're all coming together there. Up 1.4% on the week. Mid caps. Up a percent today, up one, up 3.55 percent on the week. Again, positive bars here. Uh, this is the sixth day up for mid caps, firmly above the 50-day moving average. The slope of the 21 going to come back up through the 50-day as long as this uh, move higher holds next week. IWM up 1.2 percent on the day, back above the 50-day moving average. Three closes above the 21 now, up 3.72 percent on the week. The VIX, week all day today, look at uh, six straight down bars for the VIX, back below the 21, the 50, we're really stretched to the downside here. Uh, and we haven't really pierced this 13 level except for twice going back to June. Uh, this is a mildly concerning for a snap back to the upside, which would coincide with a pullback uh, in the index. As you can see the VIX, that's a pretty big move, down 16.5% on the week. Let's flip to the dollar. Dollar continued strength, very strong day today. Uh, we Not what we want to see. We were certainly much more preferable this pullback, but this is a new closing high on the dollar going all the way back to November of last year, mildly concerning, uh, up 0.21%, uh, made a lower low and a higher high this week, and seven straight up weeks for the dollar, this is generally not good for stocks, but stocks certainly shook it off uh, this week. How did that correspond to the precious metals? There's usually an inverse correlation. GLD basically flat today, up 1.4% on the week. GDX, that's gold stocks, down 0.6% on the week, up 2.4, or sorry, on the day, down 0.6%. Uh, silver, 
also a rough day today, uh, down a percent, also down for the week. That got pretty extended after that gap up two weeks ago. Uh, Bitcoin will check this, and Bitcoin, you know, had a nice move midweek uh, along with the indexes that was on the follow through day, but really came apart over the last three days. Bottom line was a 2% loss today, 1.4% loss for the week. Let's flip over to bonds now. Broad bond index down big time today, down 0.75%, slightly positive on the week, but ran into the declining 10 EMA or uh, 10 simple week moving average and uh, got above but broke down below uh, the 50 day moving average, which corresponds, sorry, not, not the 50 day. It didn't get to uh, the 50 day uh, except for yesterday and then reversed today and had an ugly day down 0.75%. TLT, this is the long bond, 1.85%. Uh, so are we, are we headed back to lows on prices, meaning back to highs uh, on the yields? Let's take a look at the 30-year. And we put on TBT today with this move back above the 21 on yields. As it pulled back, this you can see this 42 level uh, kind of acting as a support slash resistance level. Uh, that's where we broke out, failed, and then reclaimed. Now we undercut it yesterday and back above it today. Uh, up 1.93% big move on the 10 year sorry on the 30 year TNX is the 10 year also big move up almost 2% uh, reclaiming that 21 day moving average and right back into that 42 level so that's the inter asset correlation that we check that we review with every video let's go to the tail of the tape now you can pause this uh, NFP in line basically couple thousand jobs more created than were expected but last month was revised lower so net net it's basically a wash but average hourly earnings were below expectations that's good news for the fed as far as possibly pausing interest rates we're back on the bull case now with the follow-through day uh up two-day consolidation on the nasdaq and the s p after four days up fifth day above the 80 ma fourth day above the 21 ema as far as sectors go today oils gapped up strong all day the leading sector banks also uh xl b and f so basic materials and financials also led today along with bond yields bond prices silver gold and xl c y p and u that's communications uh discretionary staples and utilities to the downside from the portfolio standpoint with the gap up in NRGU and multiple breakouts from the recent ranges across the oil patch, uh, we added to NRGU and uh, we bought TBT on that move back up in interest, interest rates. The bottom line for today and for the week, the big indexes consolidate, small and mid caps lead, but all indexes up for the week, plus we had the follow through day. Uh, pretty positive week overhead here and we're actually trapped in this area here this 4500 to 4535 uh, area of resistance the last three days we've closed inside of that uh, that was where we reversed all the way back in april of uh, 2022 at the 200 day moving average uh, and it's a key fib from the 2022 bear market we'll see what next week brings obviously the key levels are going to be the 21 ema and to make sure that there's no uh distribution no significant distribution in the indexes uh market closed monday we'll be back at it on tuesday let's go now to the 21 over 21 list and remember we've got a weekly shot here as long as uh, as well as the daily shot the only uh ticker taken off this week and again i review this over the weekend when we do our sector work to see if we need to move some things around but um drv which is the inverse of real estate we got stopped out on that earlier this week this may actually make another run next week if interest rates continue to go up because this is based off of xlre and that ran into the 50-day moving average and then started pulling back when it got back above the 21 that's when we stopped out of drv earlier in the week and the stock that was added this week to the 21 over 21 was something that we bought early in the week uber we actually bought it on wednesday 
uh, we got stopped out last week. We're paying a lot of attention. When we get stopped out on something and it reclaims the stop level and another key area, we want to make sure we get back in. We've seen it time after time that when we get stopped out of something, uh, the market, there's a reason why we buy things. Sometimes there's short-term weakness. Sometimes we close the week with a loss. Sometimes it's underperforming. Sometimes the market is showing weakness. Uh, there's multiple reasons why we get stopped out. Uh, just the same as there's multiple reasons why these things reignite themselves and show strength. And post-trade review, we need to do a better job of getting back into these is the bottom line. And that's something that we're really focused on as a team. And we rebought Uber after getting stopped out last week, rebought it as it came back above this confluence of moving averages, the 8, the 21, and the 50, and a nice week for Uber up over 7% uh, on the week. Let me slide this over and make sure we're showing percentages and not number of dollars up, but up 7% on the week. So that was the one stock added. The rest of these are leftovers, and man, there was some good action. Uh, in the 21 over 21 list this week. Splunk, gap up. I don't know that I have really ever seen seven days straight higher after the gap up. We're looking for an entry in this, but haven't been able to get one as it's just ridiculously extended. Uh, but very clearly the market liking the reaction to Splunk. Uh, Fastly, another one, very, broke break out of a, an ascending base and showing very positive action up 9.9% on the week. CCJ uranium stocks had a good week. Uh, gave us a chance on this pullback to 35, up 2.7% on the week, higher closing highs. Light and wonder, bit of a consolidation over the last four days, but riding the ADMA higher. IBKR looked like this was going to come off the list this week as it had a big shakeout on Tuesday and a close below the 21 on Wednesday, but put two solid days back together to get back above the 21, although I am concerned about the relative strength line on this one. Palo Alto, I considered punting this over the weekend, decided to keep it uh, up 5.2% on the week, back above the 50-day moving average, and of course, above the 21-day moving average where it bounced on the pullback after earnings. Arista Networks, higher highs the last two days, up 9% on the week. NVIDIA, uh, weekday today, uh, down 1.7%, but hey, it's still above its ADMA. You got to entitle these things to pull back up 5.4% on the week. CEIX, Mike gave a good breakdown of the fundamental story on this. He really liked it. Uh, up 5% today, up 7.7% on the week. AAOI. Very volatile stock, uh, up 7% on the week as it just continues to work its way higher along the 21. Eli Lilly, with its uh, weight loss drugs, continues to uh, make higher highs after its earnings gap up. Same thing with NVO, uh, earnings gap up, basing uh, since then, putting in some nice tight weeks. App Lovin cleared the 40 level. Uh, tight consolidation day today, another leader since its earnings gap up. Celsius, one of the kings of uh, growth land and uh, IBD land, uh, down today, up 6.7% on the week, continuing to make higher highs after earnings. Axon pulled back after earnings, but held right where it needed to, and now higher high after its earnings report. NRGU, this is what we added to today. This is how we're playing the whole energy patch. Uh, great day today, up 6.7% and up 10% on the week. Bungie forming a nice little cup base there with a bounce off the 21E. VRT, this is a prime example of why we need to buy things back after we get got stopped out. We got stopped on this close below the ADMA on weak market action, made a lower low, reclaimed the 8, and has just trudged higher since then. Uh, TBT, bought this back in today, thought it was going to get taken off the 2121 list, uh, but reclaim the 21 by the uh, end of the week with its solid action today, and we repurchased this today. And Weatherford, WFRD, another oil stock, uh, six straight days up, making a higher high of 6.4% on the week, a leader in the oil patch. And that's going to wrap it. As always, like to hear from you. My email is DonnaRiveraSF.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button. 
and feel free to leave comments. We check them all and I re personally reply to all the comments that are put out there. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a client, call my partner, Dan Stewart, dan at revereasset.com, or the phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the markets, it's how much of that you can keep. With us being back in uptrend since uh, Tuesday, we are looking for the best low risk entry points and leading stocks and leading sectors, and also adding some to leading sector ETFs and the indexes uh, when the time calls for. And if you're interested in this approach, we'd like to uh, talk to you. As always, uh, reach out and um, we, uh, we go through the mailbag on our podcast every week. Uh, we'll answer your email and we'll discuss it because if you're asking a question, you're probably not the only one out there asking it. Uh, so we, we strive to be transparent and we're passionate about educating our clients and the people that follow us. So uh, stick with Revere to stay on the right side of the market. And with that, we will wrap up the video for the week ending September 1st, 2023. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.